Hey guys, what's going on? It's one with the boy YT, and today we're gonna be taking a look at advanced bedrock PvP. I haven't really seen many bedrock PvP guys, most of them are Java, so I thought, you know, might as well make my own. So here we are, we're gonna take an advanced look at bedrock PvP. So with that, let's get into the first topic. Alright guys, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're actually gonna change up the settings here. So we're gonna turn down the graphics so we can get more frames per second. You don't have to do this, it's just, you know, if you want a couple more frames, it's always nice to turn them down a little bit. So, fancy leaves off, friend of skies, beautiful skies, smooth lighting, fancy graphics. The world is going to look a lot worse, but if you're really going for performance, I'd suggest it. So, here we are. Again, the world looks a lot worse, but if you really want performance and a couple more frames, like you're going, like, all in, I'd suggest doing this. It could help you out in your gameplay, who knows? Alright, so once you've optimized your graphics for what you want to perform versus what you want to see in the game, we're going to move on to topic 2, which is speed bridging. So I'm sure some of you have played on servers, and you're playing Sky Wars or Bed Wars, and you get from point A to point B. Now, obviously, you bridge to do that. This is what bridging usually looks like when I'm playing on a server. I've played on servers before. This is what I see everyone doing, alright? On Java, speed you can do something called speed bridging, and that looks something like this. But like actually fast because I'm, I'm kind of bad at it. I don't practice it. So that's what it looks like in Java But in bedrock it works a little differently So in bedrock you can look in front of a block and you can actually place a block if you could place a block there So as you can see we can speed bridge just like this and as I'm sure you'll know that is some implications on speed bridging We can go a lot faster than Java players can so that makes for a lot more fast place bed wars and sky wars gameplay so we're going to teach you how this could be used, how this is effective, and we're going to show you how to speed bridge like this and actually put this to good use. All right, and with that, let's move on to the first clip. All right, so first off, we're going to look at it from an outside perspective, and we're going to use my assistant here. He's going to be speed bridging for us, and we can watch him. So if he can grab his blocks and start speed bridging, we can watch him go. All right, go ahead. You see here, he's going pretty fast. That's pretty good for speed bridging. As you can see, he cleared this really fast. So as you can see, it's obviously much better than crouching and going backwards or crouching and uncrouching. So with that, I'm going to show you guys how we can actually do this. Alright guys, so now that you've seen the implications of it, how fast you can go, I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. So the first step is, you're going to start off by just placing the blocks slowly. And then once you place them slowly and you get decent enough at that, you can run and spam. Okay, running spamming is a pretty effective way of doing it, but it's not the most effective. The most effective way is if you look down at a certain angle, and this may take a little bit of practice. I don't even have it down yet myself. But if you look down at a certain angle, uh, you have to have a block underneath here, and I'm pretty sure you have to be on controller. So there's a little bit to it. Spamming might be better for you depending on what your setup is. But if you look down here and you hold down, hold it down, you can actually just hold it down and run as fast as you possibly can. And that's how you go as fast as you can on speed bridging. So with out of the way, just use this in Sky Wars, use it in, in all the places you can. Just apply this and you'll start winning games more. You'll get to places faster, you'll get all the best stuff, and then you'll start winning more games. So with that, let's move on to the next subject. Alright guys, so now that you have speed bridging down, we're going to move on to basic ground PvP techniques. So, ground PvP, a lot of it comes down to practice, knowing your reach, knowing when to back off and all that, which is a lot of practice, but there are some basic techniques you can apply to hopefully become better at PvP. So, the first step is W tapping. So, if I attack him here, and I'm hitting him, right, and usually my sprint goes when I get hit, so that's pretty basic. This is just basic PvP, but W tapping, or as you keep sprinting and stop sprinting repeatedly while fighting, you, you can do a little bit more damage, a little bit more knockback. It just helps out overall. Still generally a good strategy to use. Alright, so now that we know W or W tapping, we're going to move on to strafing. So strafing is pretty basic. You just move back and forth, make your opponent harder to hit. So for example, I'm strafing here. It's a little harder for him to hit me. Combine that with a little bit of W tapping, mix it up every now and then, move back and forth. It really helps out. So for example, if I'm fighting him and he's strafing on me, oh no, I can't hit him. It comes a lot harder to hit him and he can get a lot more hits off on me, hopefully killing me. Alright, moving on, I'm going to teach you the importance of the low ground. 
So low ground is really important for two main reasons. One, when we look at each other right now, we're about to hit each other, he's looking down on me, and I'm looking across at his feet, which is where I want to be hitting. I want to be looking exactly straight, which is about his legs. Now, when we look like this, our views form a right angle triangle, and as we all know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is the, you know, it's Pythagoras' theorem, all that, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is always longer than the other sides. So... He has to hit me from longer away. I have a shorter distance to hit him, which means I have a slight range advantage. But another thing is if I just hit him and he's standing still versus when he jumps and I hit him, it takes a little bit more knockback there. So knockback can be really important. Sky Wars, Bed Wars, anything we need or just getting them off you in general. So it's really important because you get better range on them. And if you can combo them while they're sitting there, then you can get a couple more hits, knock them back a little further away. And another basic thing, if you didn't already know this, jumping on the downward swing, if you hit someone on a downward swing, getting downwards momentum, you'll get a crit. Crits can be very useful for if they're just sitting tanking god apples, because if you're not spamming them, and they're just sitting there tanking, you might as well land crits out there any hit, because the other hits, they stop them from hitting you, like this. That was a good combo. But if they're just sitting there, they don't really have, they're not trying to fight back or anything. They're tanking or eating gapples. Crits are really good. And another thing about ground PvP, if you have access to them, the importance of potions. So if I hit this button here, I get strength, po strength and speed. So strength makes me hit a lot harder than I did before, about 240% or 140% depending on strength one or two. And then swiftness is a given. And quick tip, if you have swiftness, it's actually slower to, sp to sprint jump. It's faster to just stay on the ground and move. And with swiftness, it makes it a lot easier to combo someone. And strength makes that combo deal more damage. So it's always good. So if you have access to them, potions are amazing. Make sure you know when to pop them, though. Don't waste your potions. Pop them, I'd say, all just before you go into battle. And be conservative if you have a limited amount. And yeah, that's basic ground PvP. Now, a little friendly tip here, he, with him with a wooden sword and me in full diamond armor with a brand new god apple, sitting around, around uh, 28? That sounds about right. Yeah, 28 hearts. He was able to drop me in 8 hearts with about 5-ish swings with a strength 2, right? Uh, yeah, strength 2 crits. Yeah, he's destroying me right now with a wooden sword when I'm in diamond armor and I have a god apple enabled. So, if you have potions, use them, please. But you can't just go willy-nilly with them. I've died to him because I had to blow a potion too early. And he just baited me out, he waited for the potion to be over, and then I got destroyed. Yeah, another thing about this is, if you see your opponents trying to apply these strategies, make sure not to fall for them. If your opponent doesn't know about these strategies, they'll probably won't know anything about the low ground. They'll try and fight you, but your reach will be longer. You'll get more knockback. And if you see any of these being applied to you, make sure to immediately stop them. If they pop potions that you know you don't have, like strength, try and evade them, stay away. Make them waste their stuff. All around, drag it out if you're not in an advantage. And if you're at the advantage, make sure to not let them go. Always keep applying pressure. Pressure is one of the biggest ways to win Minecraft Bedrock PvP along with 1.8. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Make sure to keep it up. And let's move on to the next tip. Alright guys, so... We've, we've taught you some PvP that works on servers, bed wars, all that good stuff. But PS4 doesn't actually have access to servers. And let's say that you're in a world and you have high-end gear and you get in a little squabble with your friends. You're going to get in a fight, right? Now, usually you'll have fully enchanted, really good gear. But there's one little trick you can use to uh, really push your fight over the edge and make yourself really, really good. So he's going to put on full armor, get a shield, and go stand at the end of the range. So crossbows are really good. Piercing 4, quick charge 3. So piercing can go through his shields. It goes straight through even though he's blocking and it hits there. him. I did take half a heart even though I was blocking. And then the thing to really push this over the edge of to really kill them is harming arrows. If you use harming arrows, he will die very fast. Let's see how many arrows it takes to kill an entire protection 4, netherite man holding up a shield. One arrow. I'm at four hearts. Two arrows. It takes two arrows to kill an entire protection four netherite holding up a shield man. That's how easy That's it is to kill people. 
just like that. Uh, it's more effective than a sword at close range. This is the most effective thing you can use in uh, I combat. I took four hearts at, like, I want to say ten blocks away. We're going to move closer. I was at four hearts on the first shot. Four hearts again. And he's and gone. Dead. I even shot myself with the arrow accidentally, somehow. But yeah, if you have no armor, it'll one-shot you, as you saw. I accidentally took damage from the hitbox somehow, and I died. So, okay, now I'm going to show you, from my perspective, what it feels like to get absolutely whipped nae on by this. Oh, and if you have two? Oh, that's damaged right there. It just Is keeps stacking just... up. So, as you can see, that... full prot, oh, no. a shield, we have everything we need. Let's say we're ready to fight our opponent. We we see him loading across, but it's okay. We'll just block it. Uh-oh. I died in two seconds. So as you can see, it is extremely overpowered if you can get the gear for it. You can, if you get two of them like that, you can absolutely end someone's whole career. Just like that. That's full I just shot myself. for netherite armor. And you die in, like, literally instantly. It's so overpowered. If you're in a high-end world and you have access to these, I would so suggest using them in PvP. They're insanely broken. Your opponent can do basically nothing if you have this set up. So, that's the PvP guide. Those are all my ticks and tips and tricks for uh, PvP Bedrock Edition. If you, if you enjoyed it or are going to use any of these, make sure to subscribe, like the channel. It really helps out. I can help make more of these. And, you know, if it helped you, might as well help me back, right? So, that's the end of it for today. Thanks for watching the video, and have a nice day.